Hello and welcome to Gardening at 58 North. In this video I'd like to give you guys an update on my two chilli plants here. So this is a long running series, I've put down the, the other videos down in the description below the video. So um, I've got two types here, I've got my normal chilli which is a capsicum annum and I've got my habanero type chilli which is a capsicum chinensis. So these have been doing moderately well, this one's been doing particularly well, this chinensis as the years go on, they keeps dropping leaves, keeps growing leaves, keeps dropping leaves. And actually it's got a really bad infestation of aphids at the moment. So I'll talk about this one first, and then I'll go on to my genesis because I'm also going to be pruning that one today. So this is my capsicum annum. The, uh, the variety is Apache, and it's been doing really quite well recently. The last video I think I showed you, I cut off most of the roots, replaced all the compost, so it was almost no old compost, just all fresh compost, and it had just started to put on a crop of chilies. Well now as you can see it's got a really good crop of chilies and this is quite early, it's only the middle of May at the moment so it's good to have so many ripe chilies and I'll, I'll have to start using them soon because um, what always happens with me and this chili is I get too many chilies so I have to hardly keep giving them away and I find I can probably crop about on average one every single day throughout the year and that's how, that's how heavily it crops. I mean in summer I can probably crop almost two a day, in winter it's maybe just one or two a week but um, on average it's about one a day, so that's about three or four hundred chilies I get from this plant, which is pretty good. I mean, they are small chilies, but because they're very spicy, I only need one in addition, that's plenty enough. If I'm making a big pot, maybe two or three, but still, they're very potent little chilies. So, as you can see, the roots are coming out the bottom now. There's quite a long one there. There was another one, but I trimmed it off because it was uh, too long. This one I'll pull off as well, just to encourage more branching and further root development inside the actual pot. So, yeah, it's been doing quite well. And um, this also had a bit of aphids and every now and again I do see one or two aphids on it and I have to pick them off but at the moment I can't see any and uh, I'm sure there's still one or two there I just have to keep on top of it but otherwise it's doing quite well so the reason it hasn't put on any growth since the last video is because when you cut all the roots off the plant it really restricts the amount of growth it can do on the top so basically that stopped any growth from the top what it's been doing is putting a lot of its energy into new roots so now the roots are established it should start putting on some more growth from the top and the other reason it hasn't put any top growth on is because it has so many chilies on it. All the energy that it is getting that isn't going to the roots is just going straight into chili production. So as soon as I harvest a lot of these chilies, what that will mean is instead of putting all the energy into these fruits, it will then put out new flowers and new stems and should start growing and get ready for the next wave of, uh, of chilies. So there we are, quite happy with it. I've probably got 20 or 30 chilies, not sure, I haven't actually counted them. If you want to, you can pause the video here, try and count um, how many chilies there are, but I reckon it's about 20 or 30, so there's a good number there. As I say, there's always new ones coming, you can see some younger ones there, and there's flower buds already, so it's a continual process. I do find it kind of comes in waves, so at the moment, this is, this is towards the end of a wave, so you can see that's why there's loads of ripe chilies. Um, but it's just about it's beginning a new wave, and that means in the next stage, once all these red chilies have been harvested, I'll have just a few green ones left, but it'll go crazy and it'll put out loads of flowers and they'll be ready for the next wave after that. So that's all I'm showing for the capsicum and today, but the um, chinensis. This is one that's really been struggling for me. Believe it or not, it's actually been doing a bit better recently than it has in the past. It has actually kept a few, a few more of its leaves than it does soften. I'm not sure what's wrong with this one. I've had it about three years now. You can tell it's, it's quite mature. You can see it's got a really woody trunk there. and It's absolutely solid, just like wood. But um, yeah, what seems to happen is it goes chlorophyll like this, just um, the, basically the chlorophyll goes. It stays kind of green on the leaf margin, yellow elsewhere. I thought it might be a magnesium deficiency. So I did give it Epsom salt not long ago, but it hasn't been long enough to tell if the Epsom salt has done the trick. But generally the only way that I can really find normally to get this to work, to, to produce nice leaves again, is just to cut it back hard. And then the new growth comes through healthy and then it kind of goes all chlorophyll like this and just dies off. So, the other problem with this at the moment is it's got quite a bad aphid infestation. So I'll see if I can show you some of the worst bits. So you, so you can see there, quite a lot of aphids on that stem. Um, a lot, all the new growth is pretty much covered in aphids. I've been constantly picking them off, but it's a bit tedious picking them all off. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to give it a hard prune. That will encourage a lot more fresh healthy growth. And then I'm going to rinse it in the shower, wash off as many aphids as I can. And then I'm just going to keep on top of it with a, with a liquid, like a soap solution spray to try and kill any remaining aphids. So, as you can see, the, uh, the growth on this does get very long, it doesn't really branch much. 
So what I'm going to do is just going to get some of these lower ones, cut them back to where I cut them previously. I'm just going to make make it quite hard cuts to try and get um, get a good bit of branching. And I find the harder you prune this plant, the better it responds and grows back. So I'll just cut all these lower ones quite hard. The upper ones I won't cut quite as hard because I want to keep a quite a nice kind of shape. I have pondered turning this into a bonchi, which is basically just a chili bonsai. But um, because it's struggling so much to survive just as a normal chili, let alone pruning it into a bonsai, I'm actually going to just leave it for now. I think it could maybe make a nice bonsai at one point in the future, but to begin with I need to solve the problem of it always kind of losing its leaves and being unhealthy. So I know this looks very drastic, but I've done this several times before, and it always responds very well. It doesn't normally kill the plant, well it hasn't killed the plant so far, I'm doing this hard pruning. So I'm just pruning these all back to roughly where I've pruned it before. And this won't have any leaves after this treatment, but what it'll do is I'll put out, put out lots of new growth and it'll grow back quite healthily and happily. And hopefully I can keep the, the um, aphids off it. That'll be a bonus. So I can see here there's a couple of branches which have died. This one's died. I think it's probably died all the way back to the main stem, but I'm going to leave that just in case it decides to re-sprout. This one's the same. I think that's dead, but I'll, put, I'll leave it and see if it re-sprouts. So there we are, very drastic prune, it basically looks like a dead stick now. But um, I'll expect this to come back fine, as I say I've pruned it hard before. This is probably the hardest I've ever pruned it to be honest, um, but I think it will do well. It's quite a, it's a really solid plant, it really seems to do quite well. Now I'll have a look at the roots as well, see if there's any signs there as what might be going wrong with this chilli. But uh, no, the roots look healthy enough. Certainly not overwatered, not underwatered. There's no rotting of the roots. They're quite well spaced. There's not like a, a, a section where they're all dead from like waterlogging or anything like that. And they're not super healthy looking. I mean, they could, these, these are all quite old roots. They're not um, particularly fresh roots, but um, yeah, all the roots seem moderately healthy. So what I'll do is I'll just take off the excess leaves from that, from the compost. But that's quite a likely place where aphids can hide and they'll come back from there. And now what I'll do is I'll give this a good rinse, make sure there's no aphids stuck on it. Get rid of some of the sticky stuff that comes out of the aphids. That's basically just the excess sugar. Because when an aphid feeds on a plant, it doesn't need all the sugar. The plant sap is absolutely full of sugar, more sugar than the aphid needs. Aphid just needs a bit of that sugar and some nutrients, so it just excretes all that sugar. And that's what that horrible sticky stuff is. And that's what the ants also, also eat off the aphids. I just noticed another dead stem there. So there we are. That's that one cut back hard. This one I pruned back very hard back in, uh, I think it was February time, maybe March, and it responded really well. You can see it's looking lovely. This one, hopefully I'll get a similar result, but I'll give you guys an update in a few weeks when this one's putting on nice new growth again.